We'll begin like this. The proof is in the pudding. We'll take some deep, deep breath if you like that. Otherwise, you can just sit still. We'll uh, get to move just now. I'm just sitting for a moment to balance the very noisy bird with some silence. We're relaxing the shoulders and we're practicing to sit quietly despite the adverse condition of ourselves, which we tend to think or feel or have emotions in that extreme opposite actually to doing nothing, sitting still and having a clear mind and thinking of nothing, which is not so attainable. You're practicing with a fairly low expectation, such as to not expect to have no thoughts. Instead, we direct our attention to observe the breath, to straighten up upwards, and to be quiet within, but also not being active. And yet, we're actively quiet, striving for quietness. Raising the arms to above the head, we also know it's an active pursuit of non-ambition. It's a non-expectation, expectation. The further we go with words and descriptions, the more it fails us. Could we rather directly experience the stretch, experience the breath, and practice breath and uprightness that we are already doing. Flipping the palms to upwards, we add that stretch. Keeping the hands there, we cross the legs to the second combination. We'll feel the hands up high, we'll feel the shoulders under and the length of the arms. Inside the body there are the bones. We're also using the arms in this position to keep the body tall. We're using the muscles of the back to press ourselves up to the hands. Releasing the arms, we roll the shoulders, slow, large movements, medium sized movements, change the directions of the shoulder movements. And then onto the back, with the legs up in the air. <coughs> Hands next to the hips. We'll let the feet float for a bit. It's fairly easy if you bend the knees, the feet will just float in the air above. Then pointing the toes up in the air and then flexing the heels. Keep the flex of the heels. You're stretching the legs as straight as they can easily stretch straight. Big exhale, we relax the legs, ankles especially, rotate the feet outwards in circles, but slow motion. Change to inwards, slow motion. And then paddle feet actions, a couple of movements. Keep the feet free. Cross the one thigh over the other, and interlace the hands, fingers over the knees, the further knee. We're lying on the back, relaxed. We're achieving some release of our weak. 
We're not doing much, but we're getting something going. Release wires, looseness wires. We're lying low and at the same time in this particular body shape so that the body can benefit. from the stretch taking place, we will uncross the legs and cross to the other combination and then we're just lying there doing this loosening stretch in a very low energy consumption. So we're not speeding up our metabolism, we're relaxed, we're loosening. We're not uh, not participating, but it's a very easy level of participation. Both legs to the air, flex the heels, point the toes. Notice when the positions or the stretches get easier, your body is becoming accustomed, that's why, to the practice. You're flexing the heels, pointing the toes at yourself. When we ease into something, practice anything, mental or otherwise, or practice. We get into it and rolling up to the inhale. We can have one or two attempts, maybe get the first time. You go to dog stretch next, face down, forehead to the ground, bridge of the nose and the floor, arms relaxed, elbows somewhat wide. Easy exhale, face to the floor. We're not pressing ourselves down hard. We're going in softly to the practice. You may even soften the practice to let it feel more nourishing kind in the body. Coming up to inhale, arms are under the shoulders. We'll bring the legs to cross legs. Arms open, stretching to the fingers, the crown is high. Deep breath, slow in, slow out. We're sitting quietly, observing the breath, we're aware of our nostrils. We're aware of our physiology as a whole, bringing our attention to the fingertips then shifting it to the shoulders, then to the plane at the back of the neck, where we tilt the head forward, like when we drive a car, we survey the road in front of us, but we're also aware of the landscape. And when we're a passenger, we can look around. We can even close our eyes and just feel the movement. Uh, 
Likewise, we can draw the breath into the body, feeling the air. We can hear the air as we push the breath out, and therefore we can shape the way that we breathe to be a more smooth breath, which will have an influence on the nervous system. So when we feel safe, when we breathe in a safe, smooth, comforting breath, and we create that nervous system temperament directly by the nerves. It gives us a sense of expansion, concentration, safety. We could imagine or realize that we may always be safe, as safe as one can be, by being strong in the body, flexible. Breathing smoothly, at a ready but calm. We bring the hands to the prayer position. We shape our life attitudes using our yoga practice. When the shoulders are relaxed enough and the breath is small but we're not holding the breath out of tension or, or fear or anxiety, we can test for that by taking a large breath. And then that large breath will also remove some of the edge of our edginess. So we feel soft in the body, we relax. We'll do on three times, take a large inhale. We'll interlace the fingers at the back, uncross the legs, recross the legs. So we primarily stretch and loosen and focus, which are two directions. Stretching is usually an opening up when you're getting larger or supple. Focus is usually on a point. You can focus on the on the line, if you can imagine that, between the furthest point of the stretch and the center that the stretch comes from. But it's also non-linear. It's a sense of, of a sphere or a large space. So when you take a large breath, then there is the inhale through the windpipe, but there's the blowing up of the body or the lungs. You bring the arms to up above the head. Eyes open, the fingers spread, the shoulders relaxed. Big sigh breath. You're just sitting here and relaxed with the arms up. And then soften the shoulders or stretch more. So our logic dictates that uh, if we do this in the right way, then the tension of how we were holding the body would start to be transformed by doing nothing. If you're not doing nothing, you're letting your hands relax above you in the air. 
you're not doing nothing because you're paying attention to nothing. Shoulders are relaxed. So you're turning on a certain faculty, understanding the practice. We take a large breath through the nose. The breath through the nose, the nostrils increases the velocity and the depth of the breath in the lungs. The breath is way more shallow through the mouth. So we do a few breaths in and out the nostrils. And you can feel the velocity increase all the way to the diaphragm. You don't actually breathe deep through the mouth. But the breath out through the mouth can help relax us. Then we're looking for the sound where the breath is a breath of satisfaction. It's nice to have a satisfactory sense of having eaten just enough or having had a glass of water, but not like three millimeters. Uh, a few glass of water when you want a few glass of water. It's the satisfaction of having done something. A stretch provides us that, so we're making a smooth, pleasant, or a beautiful sound with the breath. So sound as tonality, thoughts has a tone as well, have a tone. Stillness has a tone. We can be effective and all over the place, or we can find our way through the situation. You can either make it bullying or you can make it smooth, beautiful. Cut through the butter or you can hammer it with a blunt instrument. And relax your shoulders. So a well-known scenario in this country is, are those uh, red, what, blue light, uh, blue light guys. And uh, the other day I was driving a Baden Powell and I felt the, felt, it's like I felt the, the violence or the energy of it, it's like, wow, get out of my way thing. And then you think of rugby and you can play rugby like that as well. Or you can get the olden days in the 1970s, the Springboks had a really good back line. And they had this like perfect center twins, Peter Wolf and Chris Daisy. And they would just go like this, and then suddenly they'd score a try and go, How did that even happen? Because they just knew where the gap was, and then they would accelerate at the right speed through the gap. And that's, that's beautiful. And then you get these other guys, it's like this low energy, it's just like, Oh, God, you can't play rugby like that. You know? Legs long at the front. So the crown is high and the shoulders are low. So you're not forcing yourself, but yet you're accelerating through the gap. So that makes sense if you drive a car or play rugby to understand that. So you actually accelerate, but time slows down. So that's a bit more trippy, but that's actually what happens. You're taking a slower, smoother breath, and then you open up, and you, the body kind of morphs into the position of the twist. And then when you're there, you feel, hey, that feels great. I didn't you know, break my back or shoulders in the process. And that's a Zen kind of space. And it doesn't have to be in Japan. You can even achieve it playing rugby. You take a large breath, big in breath, big exhale. Shoulders are relaxed. We're stretching a little bit more, and then in a gentle way, you could 
push or f force isn't the game the right word, but you're pushing against your st uh, stiffness by being becoming more supple. It's a give and take practice. You could soften a little bit and then try again. And you turn to the front and you switch to the other side. Crown higher, shoulders are lower. And having done the one side, you will feel stiffness on the new side, but you're already becoming more supple. Feel the twists. So we do these practices so that we can use a center and expand. Crown high, shoulders low. In the twist, breathing. Being aware of the inner areas, aspects of our mind and body. Body mind. And we're turning forward and putting the feet wide as our yoga mat. We're leveraging ourselves up to relaxing the forearms. We practice with many ideals or thoughts around our practice. We're thinking about suppleness, it doesn't mean that we're particularly supple. You can think of speed and acceleration, but you can have a slow car and use the same principles. And then put your hands on the thighs where, this, where your elbows or forearms were. Deep in breath, big exhale. We're coming all the way upright, and with the fingers interlaced, we're standing with the thumbs pointing forward. And particularly in relation to our own body, we, we've got to know our, our body so well that we realize that our body may actually be quite a blunt instrument, but you can use it smartly. And especially when the instrument gets blunt, then you have to be innovative as well. We're taking a large breath, big exhale, shoulders are relaxed. We're bringing all our attention to the breath and the lungs at the same time. And we're feeding energy into the brain by breathing. Keeping our attention on the brain, the lungs, but also the muscles of the feet. We're experiencing ourselves as a whole, complete system. Relax with the shoulders, or relax your shoulders if you find you lifting the arms and the shoulders. Lower the hands, lengthen the neck, and feel how the whole system is benefiting. There's no disadvantage in yoga. We're taking a large in breath and a big exhale. We will bring the hands in the same shape to just under the nose. The elbows are relaxed. Separate the thumbs a little bit. Keep the fingers interlaced. Close your left nostril and breathe in and out through the right one. And then we switch to the alternate, the other nostril. Hold the hand in the same place, thumbs together, breathe in and out the nostrils and you will, you will feel the air move onto your thumbs as you breathe, but it must be a large breath.
Stretch the hands up high above, palms up. You're stretching the knuckles and the shoulders. You realize how supple you become. You're no longer stiff and tight. If you were stiff and tight, you're relative. More supple, even if you were supple. Unless you're really good at your practice, you, you will be relatively supple, or stiff. Uh, in the morning when you wake up, start to be supple. Keep your one elbow up and the other elbow low. And then raise the face, chest open, light breath. You deliberately hollowing the back between the shoulder blades and deliberately opening up the diaphragm and the chest as you breathe. You're doing more of that, more open. Okay, too much. Stay in the position, chest more open, larger breath. Stay in the practice, deeper, slower breath. And then switch to the other side. You feel that some of the switching has a little bit of a release. And you're not hammering yourself into the new position. Now for the next breath, you can amplify the breath and stretch. All of these processes, they take time. That's why we warm up for the pinnacle of the practice which is usually close to the end of a posture position. We're standing in the yoga asana, but we're paying attention to our, our posture, our uprightness, which is unslumped, no slump. And there shouldn't be the kind of tension that hurts you. Muscle tone. Deep as large as breath. Both hands, knuckles up, and the feet that are wide as the mat will roll over the sides of the feet. When we release the arms, note that your hips are rolling more or less the same height from the ground. You're not going up and down like this. It's a horizontal movement for the hips. When we go a little bit more, we relax the shoulders now completely by shaking out the hands and let the hands hang. Maybe one, maybe the other. <coughs> Making sure that your hands, your arms and your shoulders are finding a permanent cramp. Stiffness, like repetitive strain syndrome. We roll some more over the feet. Occasionally, you can go through the length to vary the movement. Standing to five point star, your feet maybe want to be off the mat or the length. You can see it fits. Crown. Uh, High and eyes closed. You're feeling the sides under the arms, the sides of the trunk, but also the space under the arms. So there's a meter or so under your arms to the floor. And the palms are together above, not together facing each other, the space between. Bend the knees a little bit, relax the back. You have a curvature, but not the arms. Big exhale, stretch the fingers up. You're aware of two thighs, two feet in its ankles, and the shins and the legs. And you so focused the practice as a firm grip on your attention. 
really not sure whether it's the practice of the body that has captured your attention or whether your attention is capturing the body. Big in breath, big exhale, shoulders are relaxed, the arms are up high. We could do this for a longer time. We're feeling that, bending the knees, relax the back and the shoulders. Slowly release the hands to the front, keep the legs the same, and then bend the legs a little more. You're standing quite heavy, but light on the feet, shoulders are relaxed, and you bring the feet together. Fingers interlaced, the thumbs are relaxed at the pads. We will practice not thug like, but nimble. Picture or imagine a fairy, like a fairy tale fairy, or maybe just a butterfly. It's kind of similar. Big in breath, big exhale. You're thinking of the butterfly wings, which is why fairies look like they do. Counterparts. Deep in breath, big exhale, feel the bones of the body. And what you need to be more fairy like would be an addition of some kind of an energy or fairy wings. If you want to be a little nimble in that direction. We're taking a large breath and air and energy that fills the mind and the body with light and imagination and visualization. We can be much lighter relative to our own already existing structure. Very unfairly like bone density wise. So we don't think there's problems with our bones. Bones are strong. So we're even realizing that when we take a large breath and we do yoga practice, shifting our weight to one leg, and the other foot is a place keeper and holds us in this practice. You're standing on one leg would be slightly bending. If we do that frequently enough for long enough for the toes in exactly the right place, then we are building very definite strength of the bones of that, and just the muscles of that leg. Studies are saying if you do this twice a week for 20 minutes, then you don't have osteoporosis in that leg. Quite a commitment. Relax your shoulders, crown higher. Not in standing for 20 minutes at a time. This is strengthening the mind. And it will give you a very clear understanding of how that leg actually works, muscle wise. How balance comes about. You know, aware of your nervous system, your ears, your thumbs, and how if you're not getting tired at all, but you're starting to feel energized, then your practice is working. We'll add the breath where your hands are. We'll add the breath with more strength. But more less speed. We're thinking of velocity, which we think of as faster, but velocity is also power. We switch to both legs. If you jiggle the legs gently, relax the shoulders. We feel that we're becoming more in tune with our body. Then we're switching to the other side. So, the foot must be held just right, otherwise it will cramp. And uh, the diet and constitution will just be right, otherwise it will also cramp. The lack of statistics, we, we don't know where they come from, but 
some of them were quite interesting. Uh, statistically, three quarters of the American population is deficient in magnesium, which means they have a lot of cracked bone. You're bending the knee a little bit more. But interestingly enough, there's no statistic that really proves apparently that magnesium works. So I wonder why. We take a large breath in the exhale. We're bending the legs a little bit more. The leg is stronger here at the thigh. And then just checking out our connection to the two legs. We obviously want to practice exactly the same for both legs. We're also building bone density in this leg. Which means it's helping with osteoporosis. But you have to practice 20 minutes twice a week. Right. So both this practice. It's an actual physical practice. Back of the neck is long, the shoulders are low, and the back of the neck is high up to the ground. Large breath, big exhale. You're standing still, but you can feel this subtle movement. The body is subtly maintaining its balance. So balance is an extremely subtle practice. But if you don't have balance, then you just fall over. It's not subtle, it's terrible. It's obvious. Crown, high shoulders down. You're not punching the body in. It's muscle tone everywhere, not even the leg that you stand on is bunched up muscular or supple, agile muscle. Speed up the core strength of your muscles in the abdomen and metabolic power. Two more, slow breath. Feel the last of the breath through the nose and make a beautiful sound. Stretch like that. So, thinking about cars again, sports, uh, muscle cars with a nice sound because it purrs like a cat. It's associated with those kind of <coughs> cat like or strong engine type power, which is more metabolic and muscular in the lean muscle, quick acceleration. But Bring your arms up about your head, feet wide on the mat, in a, in a relative to your own capacity. If you can lift the feet a uh, fractional roll to the sides as you roll like this, then that's great for you. So it doesn't have to be like centimeters of movement. It could be a little bit of a movement then relative to you, that's great. Same, arms you don't have to jam all the way to the back. You're kicking out one foot and the other one. Keep the arms like that. Relax the elbows. Then the hands a little bit apart. And that rotation of the hands and the bending of the back foot and the holding awareness of space between, including the space of the lower back, thigh muscle at the front, front foot muscles. You have a whole awareness of yourself. Not a somewhat iffy awareness. And the back of the neck is high and long, shoulders are relaxed. Hands to the flat back to table posture. You're stretching the crown forward. You can see your feet. So, our yoga practice is also a training ground. This is where we become aware of of our bones and our muscles. Deep in breath, big exhale, chest open, and looking up and forward and the shoulders are back. So these practices that are good for the bones and the muscles, are also good for our hormonal balance, all yoga is. You're rolling up on the inhale, 
both hands are on the lower back. And then you bring your feet together. You're squeezing the shoulder blades together. That opens the front. You're attempting to put the chin forward, but rather draw the chin back and push the crown up. So if you're thinking that you're opening the chest, that's one thing, it's true. You're also working on uh, compression and bone density of the upper body, flexibility in the shoulders. Energy to the brain, with the body strength and core muscle strength, and your hands are at the lower back. That's where the back benefits of the general core strength, which is also where we put our hands to feel the area of the first and the second chakra. Deep in, big exhale. The chakras are around the body operating and in the body so it doesn't really matter where they are in a sense air is around as we breathe the air it's just air it's everywhere then we're bringing the hands to the prayer position and we're thinking of a very high precise self-awareness and a very high or elevated sense of air. Air has a very fine quality. You have like the body, just the body, air, just air, but the conscious connection to air. Take the hands to high up above. Point the fingers more, stretch up more. Feet wide as your mat. Bend the body forward halfway to the table. Bend the knees, if you can think, halfway to, to 90 degrees. And then increase the difficulty level by either bending the knees more and the body forward or one or the other, but be more accurate, so the one, you mustn't lean skewed to one side or the other side. The arms mustn't be too wide apart. And the neck mustn't be straining. The arm will be up and the neck is lower like that. Make it harder. They're still breathing. Is it hard to breathe? If it's hard to breathe, then it's a bit. Slow it a little bit. Bring the arms out, slower. No. It's harder, easy breath, stronger, bend the knees more. Yeah, work hard. Breathe. Construction workers are excellent. <laughs> and then you can hang upside down. So your feet stay the same place, your head hangs down. And we're going to your hands and knees. And then you're pushing the body forward for a puppy dog, but now the face is up or the head is up and you're looking forward. The back of the neck is very uh, constricted or short. Big in breath, big exhale. You're putting the chin on the mat, trying to look at your thumbs. You can even have the air in the chin in the air. Big exhale. And from there, come up to in breath. You go to uh, down dog, lifting the hips up. Then just one stronger practice, tucking the right foot to the outside of the right hand. Bounce a little bit, bend the arms, switch feet. Feel your movement, not hard rigidity. To plank, to feet, to both feet to the outside of the hands, and then slowly down to the floor, roll to the ground with the legs up to a half bridge. Oh, sorry, a half shoulder stand. Straight and flex into the knees, bend the knees, they will lower towards your head, and then roll to the ground. 
Lying on the back with your arms around the knees, keeping your knees from falling further away to the sides. You're pulling them a little bit towards yourself with the weight of the arms. Relaxed picture image. Put the fingertips at the heels, big exhale, hands on the floor, feet wide on the ground, a little wide of the body. Big exhale, that's the position for half bridge, which we're doing now. Hips up, roll the shoulders under. Because of the preparation practices, the back of the neck expands easily and long. Shoulders are rolled under, chin is tucked in. The breath is easy, the thigh muscles are strong, but not hard. The practice has a challenge for us, a unique challenge for each person, but more or less is not that easy. We ease into the practice, making it easier relatively, or maybe going higher up to gain more ground, depth of practice wise. Deep smooth breath, superior breath, better breath, longer in the position, more benefits for longer. Release slow motion, slow, slow motion to the floor. Large exhale, arms going to above the head, relax the arms above the head, soften the chest. Elbows are bent. We're appreciating our practice on the bone level and on the supple level. And on our, we can imagine our agility, speed of acceleration increased by our practice. Our hormones are better off as are our bones. The hands are at the hips, arms next to you. Hug the knees, head up to the knees. Pull out the lower back, the sacrum, lengthening the back of the neck, similar to the uh, half bridge, really, but more relaxed, easy on the neck. Lengthen the feet up, legs. Gain a rocking movement by aiming to roll up and then actually doing it in one go. We're sitting with core strength. Powerful breath, strong breath. And a few more. Smooth breath, beautiful sounding breath, flexing into the heels. The body has acquired subtle power here. Smooth breath, smooth muscle tone. And from there, if possible, roll to your shoulder, stand. Relax to shoulder stand. Softened breath, soft practice, especially at the neck. A little bit of core strength, bring the legs towards above the head. Your knees will be above your eyes. If you want or can, you can hoist the hips up more by pressing the hands into the back or on the floor. You can have arms to the opposite direction of your head on the floor. The hips will be above the shoulders. If you supple enough at your hamstrings, the legs will reach the floor, the toes will. Full plow. Roll slowly to the floor. You're lying on your back, chin in the middle, feet in the air. 
Big Lord's exhale. Softly hug the knees. Then the feet to the floor with the hands on the hips. And feeling ourselves, whatever you're experiencing, that's what you're experiencing. Focus on practice. Let the legs slide long. Own practice, own target and speed. You're lying on the back, long legs, easily relaxed. Shoulders soft, body soft. Big large breath, big exit. <sighs> gently hug the right knee, the other leg you gently keep straight. There's a bit of stretch in the straight leg and a bit of pull on the other knee. Switch feet on knees. Bit of stretch, long leg, bit of pull on the other knee. Long legs, palms open, soft knuckles, soft body. With the same softness, take the hands to shoulder height. And then bend the knees, feet to the floor. Feet off the ground, ankles and knees together. Twist to roll to your right, to roll to the right. And you're twisting. Do the same to the other side. We're managing the practice using the, the core muscles and the shoulders and our body awareness to benefit the back. We try maybe one or two different angles. We're practicing to be more mobile, loose, and aligned, stronger center. When we've done one or two sets, or three or four, then that would be enough. We're going to hug the knees again, stay on the back, knees hugging. Clearly, a centering, grounding practice this is. 
The long legs in the air, the head towards the knees. Rolling up, that's to the inhale. We roll up with a tightening of the core muscles. Back of the neck, arm, body tall, palms open. We're neither thinking of muscles or bones, but rather we have a pain of drops in the window, transparent. It's like you only exist in your own mind and you have no thoughts, and you only can exist there. You can imagine yourself existing like an atom or a space between the atom, or like the window frame or the pane of glass, the illusion that you don't exist. Big exhale. We're thinking of air, it looks like empty air, but it isn't. Trying a few altered states. Nice one always. Imagine yourself like a cloud changing shape, blowing about, maybe forming a whole new cloud elsewhere, maybe changing the terrain. You land up inside a tree, it rains, evaporate somewhere. Aware of the bones of your spine, raising the crown, tilting the head at exactly the right angle so that it feels exactly right. The head is, in, is balanced on the neck. You're not holding the head in such a way that it tires you out. Or that it makes the body feel uncomfortable. The head just sits there. And there is a perfect balance for it. If you practice enough, you can sit and sleep like this without having a sensation if you can't sit and sleep. You're not really sleepy, you're deep, you're restful. So granted, it doesn't have the same satisfaction of letting go completely when you lie down, pass out and sleep. But it is a nice skill to acquire. We bring the hands to the prayer position. We're thinking of the silent arm, which is where the body and the mind sounds like the arm more. It's such a fine condition that you can move like a cat or a muscle car without actually losing any movement. And yet it's real, it's not imagined. It's somehow unattainable and attainable at the same time. Sound three times together, they can watch you.
Is it practice? The weekend has just begun. Yes. Thank you, Johan. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks as well. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.